From the time we exchanged greetings, my sister-in-law didn't seem to like me. She would stare at me from head to toe with a piercing gaze and laugh at me under her breath. At the time, I could only guess that she was making fun of the way I looked. I must have seemed like someone she could easily make fun of or put down to make herself feel better. That's why, when she asked for my help, I refused. I couldn't think of a single reason for me to help her. A Story by Maria Bailey My name is Maria. I got married to my husband three years ago, and now we live with my in-laws. My father-in-law passed away when my husband was a student, so today it's me, my husband, and my sister-in-law and mother-in-law living together. Initially, there was no plan to live together. It was just my husband and me. However, a year after getting married, my mother-in-law had an accident and hurt her leg, so we decided to move in with her so that we could help care for her. My sister-in-law, Dorothy, was already living at home, but finally my mother-in-law tearfully told my husband that she was unreliable. As it turned out, Dorothy wasn't contributing to the household expenses at all. She was single and spent her money going out to bars and clubs. It would be nice if she could have at least supported her mother, but instead she caused trouble by maxing out credit cards, asking her mom for money, or leaving her to do all the housework, even though she had a bad leg from her accident. Honestly, I think my mother-in-law is far too lenient on her daughter. Dorothy is in her late twenties, but I guess parents always feel compelled to take care of their children, no matter how old they are. That's why, even though my mother-in-law admits her daughter is unreliable, she feels she can't kick her out and lets her stay at home. Of course, I didn't want to live with them. My mother-in-law is a kind and gentle person, but that's a separate issue, and it takes some resolve to suddenly learn how to live together, no matter how nice the person is. And above all, I hated the idea of living with my sister-in-law. I wouldn't have lived with Dorothy, even if I were paid to. I felt she looked down on me since the beginning of our marriage. To put it simply, Dorothy is like the controlling leader who would rotate out one friend at a time from the group during school days. I might sound childish for saying this, but I've always thought she was a malicious person who never grew out of that habit of using people for her own advantage. I felt that she didn't like me from the moment my husband introduced me to her. She asked my name, and when I answered, she stifled a laugh. I'm 32 years old. Turns out that laugh was because I was younger than she had thought. I'm sorry. I thought you were about 40. You look so mature. To put it bluntly, she probably wanted to say that I looked older. Since then, every time she saw me, she would ask about the brands of my clothes, comment on my appearance, and look down on me with a mocking laugh. A grown-up over 30 wearing fast fashion. Oh my, but Maria seems out of touch, doesn't she? Were you homeschooled or something? You don't seem like you'd get along with the fashionistas like my friends are. Of course, I'm not the type to stand out, and I'm not particularly interested in fashion. Dorothy may be able to believe that I don't dress well, but that doesn't mean she has any right to ridicule me. Moreover, I do have friends. Not many, but they're there. I feel sorry for the people who say they like me when I'm being ridiculed so much. I knew we didn't get along immediately, but it has only seemed to get worse. If she's going to have this attitude, I decided that I just need to avoid her as much as possible. With that in mind, I decided to ignore her without arguing or pointing out her faults in return. All of a sudden, my mother-in-law needed help, and the discussion of living together came up. I told my husband that I absolutely didn't want to live with Dorothy, but then my mother-in-law called and asked if I would reconsider. My mother-in-law was 62 at the time, and apparently had plans to move into a senior living facility with support services when she turned 65 in three more years. She asked if we could please share a home until then. Faced with such a desperate plea, I couldn't find the words to refuse. Limited term cohabitation. It was a big ask, but it was only for a fixed amount of time. That was my motivation for deciding to live together. So that's the backstory, and now my husband and I are living with his mother and sister. It's already been two years, so there's only about one year left. My mother-in-law is keeping her promise and is actively looking for supportive housing facilities so the cohabitation won't drag on indefinitely. I feel a little guilty, as if I'm driving her out, but my mother-in-law, sensing my feelings, reassures me that this was her intention from the beginning. She probably wanted to take her time sorting out the house during these three years. In retrospect, I feel a little guilty for not agreeing to live together from the start. Of course, the idea of living with my sister-in-law was truly unpleasant, so I needed time to brace myself, and living with her has been difficult. Even now, I struggle with the day-to-day -day interactions of sharing a home with her. When we first started living together, she was particularly harsh on me, complaining about the food I cooked and constantly criticizing my cleaning. My mother-in-law and husband would scold her for complaining, but she seemed completely unfazed. It feels like she doesn't think of me as her brother's wife, 
but more like a slave or a maid. For about a week, I was blamed for the way I washed her clothes. You shrank my clothes because of the detergent you chose. They're all misshapen and unwearable now. You've been married for three years, and you still can't handle housework. You are essentially useless. I wanted to tell her that it wasn't my fault the clothes shrank. It was actually because my sister-in-law had gained weight. However, I didn't want to comment on someone's appearance. I know how hurtful those comments can be. I said I'd be more careful next time and tried to end the conversation. But my sister-in-law is not the type to forgive and forget any mistake made against her. When my mother-in-law's acquaintance visited our home, Dorothy laughed as she talked about how terrible I was at housework. Of course, my mother-in-law defended me, but Dorothy insisted there was no need and kept talking as if I were a completely useless home appliance, not a human being or her relative. Sometimes I'd argue back, but mostly I'd just nod and let her talk wash over me. I didn't want to stoop to her level, and I knew that arguing with her would be a waste of breath. I told my mother-in-law and husband that after we stopped living together this year, I don't want to have anything to do with Dorothy, and both of them agreed. It might be a bit spiteful, but I think Dorothy will struggle when my mother-in-law moves into a senior living facility. She's been living at home and spending her salary however she wants. I don't think someone like that can suddenly live on her own responsibly. We won't help her once we stop living together. That's my little revenge. But sometimes it seems like even God is on my sister-in-law's side. She told me that her boyfriend had proposed to her. My boyfriend's tall, and he's handsome. He's so kind. He has a great job at a huge company, so I'm basically marrying into money. I'm so glad I put effort into my looks and fashion. I wouldn't want a miserable life like someone I know living with in-laws after marriage. She chuckled while looking at me, making it obvious she was talking about me. Dorothy stood before me, smirking, and said, I bet you thought I wouldn't be able to live on my own without my mom. Too bad for you, old lady. I couldn't help but blush a little because she hit the nail on the head with what I was thinking about her. At the same time, I felt a strong wave of frustration. Congratulations on your engagement. But married life is tough, you know. She might complain about me not being able to do housework, but the one who really can't do anything is Dorothy. It was the best comeback I could muster, but she just looked triumphant. Are you trying to act tough because I won't be around? My fiancé is rich and will hire a professional housekeeper, not someone useless like you. I was utterly defeated. I swore I would never see Dorothy again once we stopped living together. I swallowed my pride and decided to avoid her as much as possible at home for the remaining time we had as housemates. A month after Dorothy's announcement, her fiancé came to visit. I thought anyone who would choose her must not be a good person. I even had such a terrible thought. I had been warned by Dorothy not to introduce myself to her fiancé. I don't consider you family. Once you've served tea, just go away. I'm not inviting you to the wedding anyway. I felt relieved when I heard those words. I just wanted to cut ties with her as soon as possible. When her fiancé arrived, I reluctantly served tea as instructed. Knowing this might be the first and last time we'd meet, I stole a quick glance at Dorothy's fiancé's face. As I did so, our eyes met. And it was inevitable. You are... As her fiancé began to speak, Dorothy interrupted, saying it wasn't a big deal. She's our housekeeper, so you don't have to worry, Steve. I told you before, right, that I have a useless sister-in-law who can't do anything. It's a loss just to get involved with her, so you can ignore her. Upon hearing those words, I bowed my head slightly to her fiancé and left the room, feeling embarrassed. Then, Dorothy's fiancé called me by my name. Maria, you were a senior consultant at the firm, right? I can't believe you're married to Dorothy's brother. Steve stared at me in disbelief. In fact, he was familiar to me. He was my junior at work until I quit after getting married. I had heard that he changed jobs after that, but neither of us had ever imagined we would meet again like this. Dorothy, I've heard a lot about your sister-in-law before, but I never knew it was Maria. I thought she must be a terrible person because you've only said bad things about her. But we used to work together. I know who she is. Dorothy didn't seem to understand why Steve was angry. I wondered just how badly my character had been misrepresented, and I felt a little anxious. You two knew each other? At Dorothy's bitter smile and question, Steve desperately explained how we had worked closely together. I had helped him at work before and even lent him money when his mother was sick and needed money for surgery. It felt only natural for me to help him as his senior at work, and I had lent him money because he was in real trouble. At that time, my grandfather had just passed away and left me some inheritance. 
so I was easily in a position to be able to help him. I felt there was no need for Steve to feel so indebted to me, but when I took a moment to think about it and put myself in his shoes, I realized that the money must have been a real lifesaver. Maria was a true friend to me, and yet you treat her like a housekeeper? I knew you could be harsh with your words, but I can't stand someone who treats people like this. I clearly need to rethink this. Our engagement is off. With a cold, incredulous gaze, Steve told Dorothy he was breaking off their engagement and tried to leave his seat. Desperate to stop him, Dorothy grabbed his jacket as he got up from the sofa. No, it's not like that. This is just how Maria and I communicate. We joke around a lot. Right, Maria? Dorothy looked to me for help in a panic, but I could only shake my head. Sorry, I can't lie. Upon hearing this, Dorothy broke down crying on the spot. Why are you ruining my marriage? It's your fault the engagement is off. She yelled and raised her hand to strike me, but my husband rushed in at that moment to intervene and held her back from hitting me. Still lashing out at me, Dorothy was slapped by my mother-in-law. It's not Maria's fault. It's yours. You've been harassing her and causing trouble all this time. I won't tolerate it anymore. It's your own fault the engagement is off. You need to take accountability for your actions. You will leave the house by end of the month. This was the moment my mother-in-law finally snapped and moved to cut ties with her own daughter. Mom, you're on Maria's side, too? With a face of disbelief, Dorothy tearfully stared at her mother. You are not a child anymore. Take care of yourself. Mother-in-law said this, bowed her head to Steve, and returned to her bedroom. From the other room, only Dorothy's sobbing could be heard. Steve told me he would be in touch soon and then left our house. My husband and I exchanged glances and sighed together. Maybe it's time for us to start looking for a new home. My husband nodded at my words, and from then on we decided to move on with our lives as if Dorothy didn't exist. Three months have passed since then, and my mother-in-law has moved to a senior housing facility. We also moved to a place as close as possible to my mother-in-law, and we are in the process of selling the family home. Dorothy stayed locked up in her room until the day we moved, but of course we couldn't just leave her behind so we forcibly packed her belongings into boxes and sent them to a storage unit. On the day of the move, we gave my sister-in-law the bare essentials, the key to the storage unit, and the $3,000 severance payment we had received from my mother-in-law. Dorothy seemed to have lost all motivation due to her broken engagement and quit her job. I don't know what happened to her after that, and it seems Steve isn't in contact with her anymore. Steve told me that he was saved, once again, thanks to me. If I had gone through with that marriage, I would have definitely regretted it. You've always been my lifesaver, really. I can't help but feel guilty, thinking that in a way, Steve is the one who's been my lifesaver. I also wished for my sister-in-law to struggle in the end. But maybe if you do good deeds, you'll be rewarded like this. At least, that's what I thought this time. My sister-in-law treated me like a slave and constantly harassed me, which is probably why it ended like this. I've never seen or felt God, but from now on, I want to live a life where I can hold my head up high.